Hello, Witch Rock. Welcome to our coven. We're angels on broomsticks. We're a mother-daughter duo. And, and we, we love the makeup. makeup. I'm Kristen. And I'm Evangeline. And today we are doing one of our episodes of Witches, Bitches, Martinis, and Makeup. It's been a while. It's been a long time. Um, but basically the premise of this is we have a witchy or bitchy topic of the day. We do our makeup as we talk about it. And we have a cocktail. What's the cocktail of the day? A Fiero Spritz, mm -hmm. which is like an Aperol Spritz, but with Martini Fiero. A little bit lighter, a little bit fruitier. It's delicious. Celebrating the end of summer. Yay. Yes. Goodbye years. Bye summer. We don't care. Welcome fall. Yeah, we're excited. I'm excited for the first time in my life. I didn't get the Labor Day blues. Oh, yeah. I'm super excited to get into, like, fall and become more witchy. Yeah. And then watch those movies that you like, except for the one with Bette Medler. The new Hocus Pocus is coming out. There's a two coming out. I can't That's wait. That's insane. But anyway. Anyway. We were saying, though, we don't like socks, so... <laughs> the only downside. That's the problem. Yes. With fall. That being said, product-wise, some things we're playing with today, we have the Michaela 2 Pot 2 palette. Pot 2, and we've got her um, highlighter. From Glam, Glam Light. Glam Light, yeah. yeah. We, I picked up a couple more Lisa Eldridge shades. We'll let you know which ones we end up using. I got the Lisa Eldridge highlighter, and and then we just happened to bring our, out... Like, we have the same... We're going to do the same blush type thing. Patrick Daw. A rose ink. And I'm going to go back to... Remember when we did our drugstore makeup thing? I'm into this. Serum mm -hmm. foundation from L'Oreal. Mm -hmm. I've been using it all the time. I love it. So, topic of the day. I encountered this video on TikTok of this person. And I suppose because I follow makeup and feminism on TikTok, they... They mushed these two things and recommended this video to me, and it infuriated me. So much so that I've sent it to multiple people. I sent it to you. Be in her friend. bonnet. Yes. It's one of those things where you keep thinking about it. You think about things, like, to say. And probably I'm just going to be word vomiting. I haven't written down notes, but, like, it's just, like, made me mad. So it's this person talking about how, basically, makeup is anti-feminist and a tool of the patriarchy. We'll pop it up here for you. It's just endlessly irritating to me that every time I want to talk about how makeup is a tool of the patriarchy and regardless of how you use it or your individual approach to makeup, the way that makeup is sold, the way that companies profit off of makeup, the men who profit off of makeup, like it's a patriarchal institution. And it, it makes me so irritated where every time I bring up makeup, everybody in the comment section wants to disregard cultural context all of a sudden. They're like, no, no, but I use it as an art form to express myself. Cool, you're still giving Sephora all your money. Who do you think the CEO of Sephora is? You think it's a girl boss? It's not, it's a man. Um, like, it's just, makeup is a tool of the patriarchy. It has been, the way that makeup companies advertise is by showing you how you can make your nose smaller with contour, how you can have sharper cheekbones, bigger lips, European beauty standards. The, the companies are selling the idea of beauty to you, regardless of whether or not you use their things as an art form. Makeup is a tool of the patriarchy. Cultural context matters. So that's a video. Um, you guys are definitely going to have to let us know your thoughts on it. But we just sort of wanted to use this as a jumping off point to talk about makeup. Is it feminist? Is it not? Is it a tool of the patriarchy? We're just going to kind of chat about that. Keep it loose. We got some stories to tell about our personal lives of the past couple weeks, and mm -hmm. that's that's the that's the plan for today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, looking forward to it. <laughs> so we'll just we'll just jump right in with jump right the in. Makeups. I'm just gonna take my time with complexion today. There's a there's a, there's a fly. There's in a fly. Here? Yeah. Oh yeah, well. Because they're attracted to the lights. So oh damn it. Ignore them. Okay. There's ignore the fly guys. So many flies in my house right now. My dog tries to fight them and then also disappears under the couch for hours after one. <laughs> so, okay, should I make points first or you? What was your first well, thoughts when I sent this video? my first thoughts is like, um, they uh, seem to not really know the makeup industry that well. <laughs> Fair point already. Um, and yeah. just sort of spouting out things that you'd think offhandly, like... You know, oh, Sephora is 
the patriarchy, we're giving money to men. But there's also kinds of indie brands we give money to, specifically, because they're women-owned. Yeah. There's the, the art of putting on makeup isn't... I don't do it for men. Like, when I was trying to attract men, yeah, I don't put on makeup at all. True. Like, a tiny bit. Like, I used to have a trainer that I had a crush on. And yeah, yeah, sure, I put on a little bit of makeup. I tight-lined my eyes because mm. they're so squinty. But like, you know, a little cover stick. And yeah. I tried to look like I was not wearing makeup. The no makeup makeup. Yeah. Which, that- well, might have just that. I don't think there's... And it, we're not anti the no makeup makeup anyway. No, we're not. Just, being, just throwing I, that out there right now. I like the no makeup makeup. Yeah, and I don't think the no makeup makeup is necessarily going to be excluded from any of these points we're making, but <clears throat> it's true. And then they throw out things like nose contouring and just like making your lips look bigger, that all those things are inherently already tools of the patriarchy to oppress women and make them want to look a certain way. It's so just... <sighs> Where to even start? Just well, like you even said. Well, the, yeah. Go, the, go. The big lips is not white standards. Yeah, they're talking about European beauty standards. And if you want to launch off into the whole lip filler trend and talk about maybe how that's a form of colonialism, maybe that's another discussion. But to like just throw out these general terms and make it sound like you're making an intelligent point, just be, by like saying. Things like European beauty ideals, dismantling the patriarchy. You're not making a point just because you're saying these words. And like you said, like they talk about how much context matters, and yeah, it does. Why don't you talk to people who know makeup and like what would be so I don't know, capitalist patriarchy if you're like supporting a woman owned indie business who's making some press glitters for you? Would they argue that that is for the patriarchy just because it's makeup? They probably say that you're putting makeup on for the patriarchy. Is that what we're saying? Because, again, I'm not. I don't think anyone I know is or in the community we watch here at YouTube. Yeah. I don't think any of our YouTube people are doing it for a man. <clears throat> no. Like, who's putting multi-chrome uh, purples on their eyelids for the men's? <laughs> yeah, who's, me. yeah who's following this for the men's you know yeah i want to follow a youtube channel so i can look good for the men's no okay let's talk about when you are trying to look good in terms of like standards of like yeah maybe there's certain times i'm not feeling put in a multicrome on my and i just want to look pretty quote unquote pretty is that in itself inherently like anti-feminist like why what bugs me especially about this is even when you're doing that why is like putting a certain type of care into your image or really expressing like traditionally feminine beauty standards does that inherently make it anti-feminist like why can't people just like take care of themselves like why is that bad like you you wash your hair you put clothing on, you do all these things, and you don't, like, judge people for it, right? No. But, so if you want to really look natural, you know what you should be doing. You should never be washing your hair. You should be, I guess, mm-hmm. going to streams to wash your body, mm-hmm. and you won't have access to a hairbrush. Your hair is going to be down to your ass. It's going to have split ends galore, and I don't know what you're going to wear, a leaf, I guess? They probably are not thinking that <laughs> Are, but what they are doing and they're trying not to do it they are trying to shame us yeah that's true and that's how i feel watching that video tiktok thing isn't they are not enlightening me no they are trying to shame because i feel like they're and they're targeting the wrong people too even if this was true it's sort of like the onus is on you to dismantle the patriarchy by not wearing makeup or like like, why are you so... They're so mad about it. Yeah. They're and so... so mad. You know, I have no problem supporting Makeup by Mario, a male-owned business. Like, yeah. I don't have a problem. Yeah. And what about your car? What about your Levi's? What about your... Do you think those are female-owned? You're supporting the patriarchy, whatever you buy. Literally. If it's male-owned. 
Yeah. Why suddenly makeup is the enemy. Mm-hmm. And then they start talking about... Oh, shoot. No, I lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah. How it's like... They, they talk about people who say, well, my makeup's my art, my creativity. They're like, well, you have to buy these things from a man. And it's like you're saying, like, literally everything you buy will be from a man or somebody we don't know necessarily or care. Yeah. Yeah, you do have to kind of, you know, try and support businesses that are ethical. Mm -hmm. But not all male-owned businesses are unethical. Yeah, good point. Literally, like, so it's like, well, what if I'm a painter and I buy my paints from Desserts, if that place still exists, and it's owned by a man? Is that not the same thing? Like, you're still, yeah. like, this is our whole society is, you can't just, like, pick this one thing and be so mean about it and target it and, I don't know. I guess mm -hmm. there's some people out there who feel like they have to wear makeup to feel presentable in certain settings. Where it men ha well, don't and it have has to that, that thing where, you know, the when your man comes home, that stay-at-home housewife thing, where, you know, make sure you have your lipstick on, yeah, all, at all times, yeah, and then you know, but like that's not what it is, though, as we know. But it's like in the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. I only yeah. watched like that one season, but she goes to bed with her makeup on, waits, and then yeah. he falls asleep, and she goes and takes it off, and then gets up early in the morning to put her makeup on. Like, that's, that's a different thing. That's not what thing. we're talking about. But no, yeah. I mean, did people do that? I'm sure they do. I'm sure I did once. But truly, that's I'm not I'm pretty even, sure like, I did things crazy. Things like that? Yeah. It kind of actually reminds me of how when I've wanted to wear makeup when camping, that somehow that's anti-feminist. And I'm trying to deconstruct that. Because why can't I? I'm, I'm, I'm camping. I've got leisure time. Why can't I put makeup on? Like it is funny. Wh eh? Why do I feel so weird? It's like I have to fit into this thing that I have to look natural in nature. That thought in itself to me is oppressive because it's making you feel like you have to look a certain way and expressing a certain look that is maybe more traditionally fem feminine. Do you understand where I'm going? At? Like then that in itself is oppressive because you're making someone feel like if they want to present a certain way, then that isn't okay. Does that make sense? Yes, you know? it does. It's Especially like, if you're wearing all that cool makeup that that woman made in the woods. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Luna Roots? Yeah, she yeah. made makeup from things in the woods. Mushrooms. And, and she stuff. has it. Yeah, Luna Roots, check yeah. them out. That's true. And let's not ignore the fact that makeup has been around for freaking centuries and, like, and adorning themselves. And I'm pretty themselves. sure men wore it. Oh, they did. I think I think this person's going the wrong way. We need to get men involved in makeup. Mm -hmm. Rather than being like, makeup's bad, let's get the men's in. And they makeup. are. I mean, some, some are, true. and I like it. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's always been, like, rock stars that wear eyeliner. Yeah. Oh, then that's so annoying because it's like, well, if a man wears makeup, somehow they become radical and, like, anti the establishment like then it becomes a revolutionary act but if a woman does it then you're subscribing to the patriarchy yeah. that in of, of itself is oppressive mm -hmm. to have to say that to the tiktoker mm -hmm. yeah you are an annoying tiktoker <laughs> you should see their other videos they're just kind of so negative it's like they're so like annoying negative. so do you want to get back to that or do you want to talk about your what you had oh we can, we can circle back. We'll we can talk about other stuff. <laughs> Let us know all your thoughts down below because, uh, you know, we love the makeup. So we're not going to let anybody shit talk uh, our uh, passion. Our yeah. Hobby. Um, I had the Coco. She got the Coco. Last, well, was it last week? No, two weeks ago now. Yeah, I, I've avoided it this whole time. I started to think I had a superpower. I was wrong. I got it probably on a flight to Montreal because I started to feel it when I was there, came back. I, was, I uh, got my period on the same day, so I thought it was my period, and I was like having these hot flashes. And we were landing, the plane was landing back in Toronto, and I was like to my friend beside me, I'm like, is it hot in here? Is it hot or what? She's like, yeah, it's hot. I'm like, no, it's hot. Like I was getting the fevers. Anyway, I had the COVID. It wasn't that bad, but... Lay in bed for a couple days, watch Lord of the Rings, conversations with friends, and uh, yeah, that's what happened to me. 
Mm-hmm. It wasn't that bad. Probably because I'm triple vax, maybe, I guess. I don't know. And you're young. Young, I guess. I got stung by a wasp on my yeah, face. That's what happened So I had a big, giant jowl. So we couldn't film because we had to make sure we looked beautiful. Yeah, and, uh, for the patriarchy. For yeah. <laughs> but uh, this one over here, she called me. Or no, you texted me like, yeah, I've got this sting. It's swelling. It's itchy. I'm like, did you take a Benadryl? Mm -hmm. What's a Benadryl? I don't know. I didn't know what a Benadryl was. And this is why when I was a kid having allergic reactions to nuts and stuff, my parents were like, you're not allergic. Well, they're all like, just, just go through it. Just go through that reaction. You're fine. But then it's like you're sitting there with a massive swollen face, itchy as fuck. Oh, it was ugly. It was so ugly. It felt like a goiter, which I don't know what is like. Uh, like it was you can feel I look like Richard Milhouse Nixon from half and I'm jolly enough as it is because I'm approaching 60 oh my gosh. so I don't need to be like jolly and bloated up ugh <laughs> terrifying but then uh I made you get a Benadryl. You were looking yeah. after my dog at this point because I was at a wedding, which I got to go to because I got over my co in time. Then turned out everyone got COVID at the Everybody wedding. Everybody at the wedding got the cocoa. Uh, anyway, I was at a wedding. You were taking care of my, my winky, my little doggy, And I was like, go to the pharmacy, get Benadryl. Oh, I don't know. I'm like, just do it. I don't know how to go. I don't know how to get a Benadryl. What's that? <laughs> Weaponized incompetence, I don't know mother. what's wrong with me. I hate anything. I've got all kinds of ailments. My The skin on my um, fingers is peeling off. My knee is whacked, like oh gosh. bloated. A bloated knee. <laughs> I don't like going to the doctor. I don't enjoy it. Yeah. And she won't like take... I only just got her on... Um, I only just got her on the painkiller. It's like take an ibuprofen when you got terrible pain. Oh no, I don't think so. And then you tried and you're like, wow. Oh, I had the best time. I got the Benadryl. Yeah. And then I had a couple cocktails on that. It wasn't the, it was a Saturday <coughs> afternoon. I didn't realize you had a couple cocktails. I don't know why they have an opioid crisis. People go, just go to the pharmacy and get Benadryl. Yeah. And a couple cocktails. Because I get this text a couple hours later. Oh, my God, I love Benadryl. I'm like, yeah, I knew you would. I said, you'll sleep beautifully. Did you sleep? Yeah, okay. I slept like an angel from yeah. the earth. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, you're, you're wildly ahead with your eyeshadow already. Well, not really, because I don't know what I'm okay. doing. I may be keeping my eye look sort of simple, I think, so I can then do a still a bold lip, and it's not like too much. I thought I was never going to get it. I really thought I had a superpower there I for did a while. I did, too, because we filmed the time I got it in January, and we there's footage of me sneezing. Right, yeah, right, right here. <coughs> Which goes to show you. Now I almost feel like I have a new superpower, though. I Which had is. the co, and I'm ready for the winter ahead, you know, to not get it, hopefully. Well, I think the co... The co. I think COVID is here to stay. Well, it is. And. <laughs> no, now I'm in front. You are poopy, poopy boys. Those um. are her dogs, not mine. Mm -hmm. They like to fight. They are brothers. Anyway. Anyways. Yes, the COVID's here to stay. I just read a book about the Spanish flu. Yeah? While I had the COVID by the same author as Room. It was really good. No way. She's a nurse who delivers babies who, um, from mothers who are sick with the Spanish flu. Now that illness sounded really scary. What? Uh, tell me more. Well, just the way it affected people and like it was like, sounds like a million times worse than COVID and I don't know, it was a good book. While I started the book, I was on the plane getting COVID. <laughs> I was reading about the, the Spanish flu. And it was released in 2020. So she had written it prior oh. to the pandemic. But What's it, it really, called? Something kind of dumb. The Pull of Our Stars. It sounds like really cheesy, but it wasn't. Oh. It, was good. it was good. I'm doing a subtle look, it turns out. You can't really see this cool mm. shade that's called... It's called Stabby's. I guess Starbucks. Oh! Stabby's. 
Is that what? Yeah, Stabby's. You want a Stabby's? You can yeah. get me a tall Meccano? <laughs> oh my Good god. god. I cannot do any accent, let alone a Boston accent. Okay, well, here's a question. Do you think makeup is feminist, or can it be feminist, or is it neutral? What What do you think? What do Me? you think? What do you think? Oh, I think it's feminist. Why? It's empowering, because whatever gives you power. Just because something is feminine doesn't make, and it makes it sound like it's, like, a, like uh, bad. Mm. Just because pretty isn't bad, mm-hmm. colors aren't bad. Mm-hmm. Putting mm. paint on your face isn't bad. Mm-hmm. So whatever makes you feel good has to be good. Am I right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it does cost money, and we pay money for it, but we don't have to. Yeah, we could or go we into could, the forest you know, and make go it Or we could, you know, go steal it from Sephora. Well, <laughs> the thing was, people in the comments were like, that's why I steal my makeup. <laughs> like, is that why you steal it? Because you're like, this is a, a capitalist oppressive tool? Is that your thought? Yeah. Like, I don't it? care if you steal makeup. Go go ahead. As long as it's, you know, not from the indie brands. Go to Walmart. Well, you steal your makeup. Because we, we do most of our makeup buying from online. Yeah. <laughs> Can't steal. I have once or twice taken a lipstick from Shopper Shopper. I can't believe you I know. are even admitting that to me. I did it a couple times. Not in a while. I don't know. Uh-huh. Everyone's stolen something at self-checkout anyways. Are you kidding me? I haven't. Never? Not once. At self-checkout? No. What I used to do at Loblaws, and this is yeah. bad because it's the worst. Yeah. I was taught by a friend of mine okay. when I first moved to Toronto. Yeah. You're in your car. You've got the um, flyer. Uh-huh. Under your flyer oh. is the cheese. The cheese. The expensive cheese. I did, that. I did it once. Nice. Good job. They don't have those flyers anymore, really. So. Uh, not really, no, because they're on your phone. Yeah. What you do with the cat litter, you keep it on the lower deck as if you forgot about it. And yeah, you see how much you could forget. I've done that. <laughs> I have actually fucked up before. I don't know whether to deepen this. Maybe along the lash line a little bit. I had something to say about... You had a good point there. About why anything that makes you feel good is empowering. And is feminist. Well, I just don't like it. It's like saying, oh, it is a, as though pink is female, blue is male, and pink is a dumb color. Yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah. You do, you, you're kind of conditioned that. And same with names. Here's my problem. Like, a lot of people are giving their girl babies male names, like Michael, Maxwell, whatever. Mm-hmm. And a friend of mine... I said, well, why is that happening? Like, because I can be pretty straightforward or like conventional. And she's, oh, I like it. Well, I don't see anybody giving their male babies mm. a name like Emily or, you know, Evangeline. Yeah, like something <laughs> that you can't, like Jane. Mm. It's mm. always the other way around. Mm. Like, I know there are male names that are, like, Leslie or something, but that mm-hmm. started out as a male name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fair point. I'm just deepening this up with this, like, olivey green from the lash line. It's pretty. I can't wait to play around with this palette more. Yeah, it's a good one. Mm-hmm. You know, interestingly, Michaela had a couple TikTok videos she posted. It was, like, a two-part thing where she was speaking about really frankly about feeling really shitty and depressed and a lot of it had happened since she'd gotten really famous and that she sort of was losing the joy of makeup and losing feeling ugly she literally said i feel ugly all the time she's when you l- stunning i know stunning and, when, and she's like when you look at yourself so much it's hard not to focus on your flaws <clears throat> anyway so she's like i'm just gonna do a makeup look for myself because for like i've started to do things for what's a trendy, and she's like, I'm gonna do some thick old brows, because she loves a dark, dark brow, and she's been trying to navigate away from that. She's like, I'm gonna do a glam, glam look, and by the yeah. end, she was so happy. She's like, I love this look. And you know, she's maybe so maybe there's a point there, and just in general, when you start losing the joy of something, it's not about, is it a tool or not, but it's like, if you start losing the joy of it, maybe then you have to take a step back and think like, well, what, why am I losing the joy? Is it because I'm just trying to get likes and 
to what other people are doing and forgetting why I love makeup or why I love this thing, you know, that's, that's a different thing. And that's something to acknowledge and challenge. And I'm glad she's like doing the, the looks that, you know, make her Michaela. You know, mm -hmm. go glam, go all out, go girl. Yeah. I mean, no one says, like, if there's an aggressively masculine-looking man who's, like, a football player and a dude, mm -hmm. no one shuns that. Mm -hmm. They're like, yeah, you know, yeah. cool, bro. Yeah. You know, in fact, you know, they revere it. Yeah. I think the best thing you can do, and I think this has been said for a while, is choice. It's all about whatever the fuck you want, and that's feminist. And if it makes you feel good, that's... Feminist, like, you know? Mm hmm And, and, yeah, if we're really getting down to it, the men's do not want to see green eyeshadow on your eyelids. Yeah, they don't, so I don't, I don't care. Yeah, slash, they don't care. If they're any person who's worthy of knowing, they don't care either way. So, look, you're weeding out, you're weeding out people with yeah. your makeup by whatever you do. Yeah. You know, the whole take her swimming on a first date thing? Okay. Then you're weeding out the shitty dudes who just can't take handle her. you anyway, all the ways. Take her swimming? Have you heard that day? No. Take her swimming on the first date to get her face wet, see what she looks like under all that? Oh, I haven't heard that. <laughs> I'm putting a little bit of that highlighter. What is this? I put it too. I'm blinded. There's so Which many things happening here. Oh. I put the other one. I should not have used my finger for this. No, you have to use a tiny brush. Oh, I want to try the Lisa Eldridge highlighter. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I find it's good to wait till the end with this highlighter because it's a liquid highlighter. So wait till you've done your eyeshadow because any fallout can like cling to it. <clears throat> so now I'm basically ready. I think I'll see how this looks. So this is the one in the shade bum, 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 Pink Moon. So it has a pink iridescence to it. Mm. I like to plop it on my hand and then on my cheekbone. So I'll give you a little okay. bit here. Boop. I'm going to use my fingies. Boop. Is that okay? Yeah, that's what I do. It's like not a blind in one, but it's a... Uh, oh, I like it. It's It, it kind of dries down a little bit more than traditional liquid highlighters, which I like. And the subtle pink sheen, I think, is... It's subtle. It's really pretty. I like it. For every... For every day wear around the men's. <laughs> oh. So you're not going to blind the men's. With my iridescent shimmery pinky purple. <laughs> <laughs> men's. <laughs> oh my god, men's. I'm going to do one last thing. I'm just going to take this matte white I always have on hand from Makeup Forever and put it in the really inner inner corner. Hmm. Front. Front inner corner? Does that make sense? Okay, also, one one more thing. We can't pretend that the look this person's creating with themselves isn't influenced by the idea of the patriarchy and men because what they're doing is being very anti sort of feminine ideals, which great. All the power to them, but you can't pretend that that look doesn't exist without there being a certain reaction to something. So literally, Literally everything we do, whether it's anti that or part of that, like it's still influence. It's still a part of it. And again, anything they're wearing, buying, I'm sure a man has owned this company or that. Mm -hmm. So, okay. ugh, ugh, poop on you, poop on you. Okay, let's do mascara and finish off with the Lisa Eldridge lips. All right, let's finish off with lips. I've given you Meet Me in Berlin. Uh, from Lisa Eldridge, which is the new formula that's uh, like more balmy. And then I have her classic matte formula in Velvet Dragon. Mm. And I've been wearing this shade so often, so lately. I haven't yet worn it with like a bold, like a bolder eye, like a colorful eye. So I'm curious to see how that's going to go. I think I will start with Endless Cacao on the lips. I'm Endless Cacaoing as you. You definitely should because I find with that sheerer formula, you need a lip line to like flesh out, flesh it out, give it body, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Mm, I'm making my lips look better. I guess I'm just mm. a tool of the patriarchy. Mm, tool of patriarchy, me too. 
<laughs> Me too. <clears throat> Ooh, this looks beautiful. Like the kind of shade I always like. Also, why shouldn't I emphasize my lips? They're pale as fuck. <gasps> Just saying, when you have really pale complexion that's all washed out, you don't always get to show off your, your lips. Color helps it shine. Oh, I remember the point I had. I remember a point. Um, that, my friend had sent me this TikTok and I had also seen it, but it was like, things have gotten less colorful over the years like like interior design and stuff there's a lot of like minimalism and like white walls and it's like the absence of color is like actually like a thing so why not have more color in your life that's all that's what i'm saying literally and also like my point <laughs> is substitute the word makeup for football yeah and see how that makes sense we should actually do that Look yeah. at that hole of her hands and say, yeah. football. 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 That's patriarchy galore. You spend a lot of money on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Although, okay, that's another rant. <laughs> I was once in a feminist rock band for 10 years. And it was sometimes really hard. Like, and it didn't always make me feel great. Like, we would play shows with a bunch of, like, bro dudes, and it was absolutely fantastic what we were doing. But I have to say how I felt a lot of the time was difficult. Like, I often would struggle with, like, things, and I don't know. But I'm just going to say that getting into the makeup community has never made me feel more better. Yeah. <laughs> more I myself. Do. Yeah. Like, and even accepting myself without makeup. In a weird way. It's been easier. It's funny, yeah. Like, like not that it's like you are with or without me, but you know what I mean? Like, I, I've never had more fun and like, and, and embraced myself and felt good about myself than when I've been doing this. Maybe that's me getting older, too. Probably a little bit, but like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's Makeup not frivolous. Is good. It's, it's, it's Yeah. Fun. That's another thing. I'm sick of, like, if you're doing things that involve your appearance, it's frivolous because that's so annoying. Like, we are put on this earth as whatever we are, little spiritual beings, put in these little weird bodies. Someone was saying something interesting about this in this podcast I listened to, but... Because it's a witchy podcast, and one of the hosts got Botox, and they put a really clickbaity baby title, like, Macy got plastic surgery as a joke. But it was, like, talking about Botox, they spend a whole episode... These witchy ladies talking about Botox, and they're like, sort of like, we have these little avatars. And it's like, when people make such a big deal about what you do to your body or whatever, it's like, well, why? Isn't that like almost in a weird way even more like you're rejecting this idea that your body means so much because you're just like, it's your little avatar, you're like modifying? Do you know what I mean? Why not? You have this body, why not do something expressive with it? Whatever that is, whatever that's how you're presenting yourself. Why do you have to like, target people for how they choose to like use their body you're literally rejecting bodily autonomy yeah it's a choice it's a bull choice head. <laughs> what? what's a bull head well their haircut looks like uh, they put a bull on a it a bull i thought you said bull bull like the guy from stranger things and his little bull cup <laughs> anyway so many things to say I don't know if I'm going to get Botox again. What do you mean? Ever? Uh, only because it felt like there was tape on my head. Yeah, but it's an amazing feeling. But I didn't get this. No. Maybe I got to get this for, like, to feel more I calm. I like to feel the tape on my head. But it was just this tape. I like that. I have to back it up. Do I like this look? It's hard to tell in these tiny little stupid mirrors. Me. I like my look. I love your look. I'm obsessed. I'm going to recreate it. It's, it kind of matches this. Was that intentional? Yes. This was intentional. Yeah. This is a purple green palette. That's true. Like an oil slick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every time I pick it up, I'm slightly shocked. Because there's these shaky things in it. It's like I'm breaking it. Yeah. Ah, uh, these are the finished looks. Ah, uh, I'm feeling this fear of spurts a little. Good for you. Yeah. Yes, good for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wonder if a man owns this company. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. Fiero Martini. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. I think we brought out some salient points in this video, mother. Yes, I think we did too, daughter. <laughs> so let us know in the comments down below. 
your thoughts on this discussion, on this palette, anything, anything and everything. Uh, and that's it for today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Stay witchy, stay bitchy, have a good week. Bye, Bye witches! witches.